Okay, and welcome to The Core Connection. I'm Mara Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is wearing identity loosely. We tend to think of identity as an is, like something that has actual reality to it rather than being a construct. So today we're going to delve into that conversation and to look at how maybe um, identity is not something that is as uh, fixed a, a, um, an, as fixed an entity as we tend to believe it is. Good morning, good morning, Rosalind. Welcome. It's great to have you here with us this morning. And welcome to everybody else who's joining us. Uh, before we get started in our conversation about identity, let's take a couple minutes to get present. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, <clears throat> all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant, bright light, lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together Vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction, the motion, the temperature, the pressure, and the tickling and tingling when you stop, and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we're talking today about identity. And um, we often consider our identity something that is a solid rather than maybe a liquid or even a gas um, in that we, we tend to interact with ourselves as these fixed creatures, you know, who, well, that's not who I am. Well, who are we? Um, we often identify ourselves with our roles uh, or our behaviors or our inadequacies even, or our skills. And <clears throat> this is coming up because yesterday in, in um, the group for the coaching program that I have, uh, we, we looked at what are some of, because really we have a multitude of identities, uh, what are some of the identities that we may be holding for ourselves that are less than beneficial? So we might have an identity as a loser or as a bumbler or as a um, a screw up. Uh, we might have uh, an an identity as a disappointment or or um, a failure. And so, what I what I want to introduce is to look at is a look at who we truly are and. Perhaps we can presence ourselves to the fact that we, I say fact, and you may disagree, um, that we are consciousness, that as that consciousness, we are part of a flowing river, and that we change over time. If we think about a seed, 
uh, that is planted in the ground, is that seed a seed or is it something more? Because we plant that seed in the ground and then it becomes shoots or, or um, just emergent plant, right? And then as it's growing, it, it becomes maybe a sapling. And then it becomes a young tree. And then it has fruit. And maybe it drops its leaves in with the seasons. And if we were to freeze any of those moments, we might consider that that thing, that that being was that moment. So we would say a seed is a seed is a seed, or the um, sapling is a sapling. But what, what it is, is a process. What it is, is a, is a life form that goes through transformations just as we as humans go through transformations and there may be some continuity through our lifetime through the cycle of a seed growing to a tree and um, going through its life cycle and the changes of the seasons but we we have those changes as well and there may the continuity of who we are it in my in my um hypothesis for myself the continuity of who we are is that we are life expressing itself through this unique form and that covers all of those transformations rosslyn says the the stages of a lotus Blossoming is akin to being fully expressed. That's beautiful, Rosalind. Thank you. You created a beautiful image. Thank you for that. Um, and so when we, when we emerge, when we go through these cycles of life, our superficial identities change. And so what we did... I say superficial identities because ultimately the the persistent identity is consciousness or life. Um, and that carries through our entire cycle and and perhaps precedes and and supersedes it. I guess that's a discussion for another time. But anyway, uh, if we if we look at the identities that we carry, we can look at them as if they're adornments, as if they were costumes that we put on. You know, where we over this over this essence of life itself, consciousness itself, spirit in a physical form over that foundation we adorn ourselves with these other identities that we can be putting on like costumes or clothing or adornments and the thing is that we can also take them off so if you were to take a moment to look at some of or one of the identities that is oppressive that you that you wear you know maybe as we said it could be as a failure a disappointment a screw up a, um not smart or too fat or um any any number of identities that we take beliefs that we hold like their truth about ourselves. You can imagine this as, as a vestment that you can actually remove 
and invite yourself to go and explore this wonderful wardrobe of other costumes, of other characters, other aspects that you could then instead take on and try on and feel what it feels like to be in that new form, to allow that to be part of your experience as a physical being, you know, to take on competency. What would it feel like if you felt like you were a failure, if you take off the robe of failure, for instance, or the identity of failure. You can hang it up if you want, if you, in case you ever want to revisit it, you could destroy it, you could burn it, you could fold it up and put it in a drawer somewhere if you want, to, if you, in case you want to revisit it. Um, but before you do that, express presence yourself to the gift that it was, to what it gave you, to the fact that you shared time together. Uh, give it some degree of respect and reverence uh, and, and make it a ceremonial act to remove this thing and, and then to essentially bless it and release it in whatever way you choose. And then you can put on a new robe, a new costume, um, a new, try on some different, different identities and see what it, does it feel like? Notice what it feels like. How is it to move in that new identity? What is it like to be stepping into competence and capability? How does it feel? How do you breathe with, with that new adornment? And if we, if we recognize these identities as adornments or as costumes, it gives us a whole lot more freedom to recognize that that's not who we are. That's an overlay on who we are. It's, it's kind of like we're in, in our physical form, we're in this vast theatrical expression. And we can have a costume change. We do have costume changes regardless throughout our lives. Yeah, I, I remember, it's coming to mind to me that when I was younger, I believed that beliefs were fixed, that beliefs were truth, and that we each had our own truth, and that was somehow immutable. And what I've come to recognize through through experience in life is that perspectives change, opinions change, beliefs change, we change. And um, our personality is an overlay. Our personality is an overlay. We may have certain predispositions, but we do have the capacity to transform and transmute to, and, and this was a, I had a really, really interesting conversation with a friend who has been delving into the work of um, a man named Bennett, B-E-N-N-E-T-T, -T, who talks about, uh, and actually it might be from Gurdjieff and Uspensky. I'm not really sure the origins of this. Good morning, good evening. Gia, great to have you here with us. Uh, we're talking about identity. But anyway, um, it, it, the conversation is about consciousness of different worlds. And uh, essentially that the worlds are correlating with different frequencies of awareness. 
and um, that I guess we're the the mundane world of duality is one world that has really pretty much dictated how humanity has been for for eons probably and then there's this next level of consciousness that is not about duality black and white right and wrong but is more about connection and um unity and win-win and uh it's a very different paradigm. It's an extremely different paradigm. And it is the paradigm shift that is being called forth in us in order to make the corrections that need to be made for actually for our very survival. And um, the, the question is, how do we communicate from one of these worlds to the other, from one of these dimensions to the other, because the, the foundational concepts are different. And I think this notion of identity and recognizing that it's a fluid construct that we can, that we can, remove that we can be free of these identities that we have clung to uh, and and that we can recreate ourselves i think that that's perhaps one way that we can step from one of these worlds into another that that we don't have to remain tethered to, to the limitations that with which we've defined ourselves. And, and that's really what these identity cloaks are about. They're, they're ways of being that limit us. And if we can allow ourselves to recognize those limitations, not as an is, but as an overlay, as, as a, um, an ornament, so to speak. You know, we, we might wear different jewelry. We might wear different clothes from one day to another. We can remove these, these other overlays as if they were accessories. They are, they are accessories. They're not our essence, but we treat them as if they are our, that they define us. We treat them as if we are that thing and we are so much more and we have so much more capability. And um, you might have, you might have a favorite piece, piece of clothing you know, that's sort of your comfort clothing, your go-to, you know, maybe it's a comfy robe or maybe it's an outfit that you put on that just makes you feel um, that when you wear it, you feel great. You look, you feel like you look great, you feel great and it feels resonant with you. Um, the thing is that we often we often um, get so comfortable with that clothing, like maybe your favorite pair of jeans. It's now worn and gotten holes that you can't you can't continue to wear them anymore. You know that that uh, you it's outlived its usefulness that pair of jeans you know that it gets to get retired at some point even though it was your favorite um what happens is that we get comfortable with destructive patterns sometimes we get comfortable with identities that 
are limiting us in grand fashion. And there comes a time where it's appropriate to retire them. And we can do that. It's not who we are. It's not who we are. Um, and, and so that begs the question of how do we become more connected to the essence of who we are? To the, the actual experience of being an expression of life through this unique vessel. Life expressing itself through this unique vessel. Try it on. Try it on. I'm, it's, it's an experience or a, an awareness that is ever deepening for me and is shifting my experience of myself and the world and is allowing for a greater curiosity and acceptance of how life unfolds. Good morning, good morning, Robin. So good to have you joining us. Welcome. We've been talking about identity and how we relate to identity often as something that's fixed and static, when in fact it isn't. Um, and it's something that we can consciously shift, like truly shifting into a self-definition for me of who I am as life expressing itself through this unique vehicle. Shifting into that has, has shifted my way of being, has shifted my ability to be forgiving of myself and others in ways that I hadn't had the capacity before. It's enabled a greater, or it's fueled by a greater curiosity and a sense of discovery to be looking at how life unfolds and to not get stuck in, in this lower world, uh, I'm gonna say lower world of duality. You know, that, that it allows sort of the movement from particle to wave to recognize that what I am is process, that I'm not a product, that there's no one moment that defines me, that, that I am the continuity and entirety of, of my life as it is continuing to unfold. It, it creates a different container, context for interpretation of events, for um, relating to self, other, and the world. You know, what happens, what I'm experiencing is that the that other is starting to disappear, that it's all part of this grander process. It creates a very different sensibility to be stepping into that and to realize that all these stories and beliefs and, and histories that we have, we, we tend to like carry them around and it dims the light that we are in our essential being. And we, we can tend to forget that what we are is, is the light that is inside, that what we are is life and consciousness unfolding and expressing. And it gives us freedom as we remember that it gives us freedom to make choices that we might not otherwise have made. Because we can be more connected to, to values. Um, we talk a lot about authenticity and 
alignment with our core values. And yes, those values can change. So if we can have, be aligned to what feels essentially right and flow with that, then if those foundations shift and change, like, like a rock being polished by water over time, um, there's, there's a profound richness in that. Gia says, oh, Mira, I'm loving it. I have been experiencing this much more than ever, the shift from duality to oneness. That's beautiful to hear, Gia. Gia goes on to say, I don't have language like you to articulate, but what you're talking to re is resonating. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's powerful. It's where we are called to move is from particle to wave, from fixed to flow, uh, from separation to connection, that we really truly are being called into this next dimension of, of consciousness and of being in order to generate new potentials that do not exist in the world of duality. They just do not exist. And those of us that are on a path of consciousness, we're, we're the ones that are making that initial motion, movement so that we're paving the way. We're paving the way for the rest of humanity and, and the planet, I think. So anyway, with that, um, I, I invite you to be the wave. I invite you to be stepping into what does it feel like? What is different if you experience yourself as process rather than as something that's fixed? You know, if you can just go to the closet and pull out all these different identities and um, you release the ones that aren't working for you and try on new ones and realize that it's not who you are in, in essence. So um, uh, Robin, we had you, I saw you say food for thought. It's great to, um, I'm, I think you had the right page. <laughs> and we're we're on the same page, hopefully, together. So anyway, that's it for today. Thank you, thank you, thank you for engaging in this conversation. And really, I do invite you to start considering what's different if, instead of being this fixed entity, we are, in fact, process. We are moving through and and changing and transforming throughout our lives and that we have a greater capability to do that um, as we become aware of that potential. So I'm Mira Rubin, this is The Core Connection and I go live here each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel. And I invite you to check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network and Enlightened World Living. And I just am so grateful to you to share these moments. And until next time, so much love to you.